Hi everybody, uh, it's Path and Tarot here, and in this video we're going to do a tarot unboxing. I recently just got Tarot of the Cloister from Amazon, and I wanted to do an unboxing video for this because I think this will be a really interesting tarot deck. The reason why I picked it up is primarily because it's circular. These are circular cards and I think that would be an interesting experience to have. The, the size of the cards and how they look and feel, they can sometimes affect how you read. Uh, I'm not really too sure on the long-term long -term effects of that or how big of a deal uh, the shape of the cards uh, means for a tarot reader, but I thought, you know, maybe this would uh, help me look into that a little bit deeper and maybe using round cards changes the way I, I decide to read the cards. So that's, that's the main reason why I got it. Another reason is that it was pretty cheap. It was under $20. Yes, I got off Amazon, but I also saw it on Alibaba Express recently too. Uh, so I imagine this could be you know, some uh, like a company, like maybe a small company doing drop shipping or uh, sending all their product to Amazon for them to uh, sell through their their Prime membership and all that. So this is pretty cool. It's a I thought it was a neat find, and I really want to do an unboxing video for this to show everyone what these cards look like for the first time. Uh, so before we open this up, let's just look at the the packaging here. So we'll get that in frame. Whoop, whoop, whoop. There we go. So you can't really see too much about the company name. It's just numbers. But it's just shrink wrapped. It came in a like an envelope. So the shrink wrapping, you know, seems pretty normal. Um, you know. Let's open it up here. Get my trusty pocket knife. Just open this up. That aside here. Okay, so the shrink wrap is off. Uh, let's see, it's got a little QR code that says uh, it's basically the guidebook, scan to download guidebook. If the code is not available, contact us online. So that's kind of neat. I guess uh, this is a cheap way to provide the guidebook with a tarot deck. Whoa, there you go, you can get a better look at the... Oh, this is so hard, it's like playing a video game where the controls are backwards. There we go, yeah, that's a good, good frame. Yeah, so that's kind of neat, so I guess there's no guidebook in here. Uh, the packaging's pretty nice, feels kind of sturdy, so that's great. So let's open it up. Let's get this open here. There's no plastic on this or anything, it's... Okay. So it looks like the cards themselves aren't shrink-wrapped, they're just loose in there. Well, there we go, if you can see that. You can hear that too! Yeah, so that's cool. Let's pull them out. And there's nothing else in there. It's just an empty... Okay, so that's all there is to it. Well, I guess that's pretty simple. So I guess if you're a, a card manufacturer, this would be a pretty easy package to put together. You just make the case for it and put the cards in there, slap a QR code on it, and sell that. All right, so let's put that to the side. So let's look at these cards. Um, wow. This is kind of cool. So I'll show you the... This is the back of the card. Very interesting. Pretty cool design. I like the texture of the card. It feels... Um, it feels like a normal playing card, actually. It's, uh, it's a little thin, but it feels a little bit thicker. I have a playing card here. Uh, just, just a bicycle playing card. And I'm just... 
they feel this feels a little bit thicker but not by much and you can get an idea of what the size is here so this is a normal playing card so they're actually almost the same size look look at that so that's kind of cool let's just I'm gonna grab a little ruler here and just get kind of a dimension right, so centimeters Zero. So this is about just under nine centimeters, I guess. Yeah, it's a circle, so it should be the same around. Science! <laughs> okay, so yeah, this is it's about the same size. That's pretty cool. So these are pretty, well I guess they're not small, the playing cards, they're not really that small, but um, compared to tarot cards, they're, they're definitely a lot smaller. So that's interesting. So there, let's take a look again at the backing. It's a very cool design, I, I like that. Uh, I really like the, the color purple. Purple's a, a pretty cool color, I don't, I don't know why I like it, but I do. And there's a design here right in the middle. You can see that. It's, uh, I don't know how to really describe that. Um, yeah, it feel. I don't know, it feels like, uh, like a broken up, I don't know, something. But it, that's kind of cool. There's some interesting geometry Maybe there's sacred geometry happening. You know, that's uh, quite a uh, a popular art artistic mechanic, I guess you could call it. I don't know what to call it, really. Uh, an artistic technique to use that type of geometry. But there's definitely some geometry going on. There's lines going down the middle. Sorry, you can't see this. I'm just looking at it so that I can tell you what's going on. Yeah, so there's a line that kind of goes right up the middle, but it's almost, uh, it doesn't quite, oh, there, if you can see, it doesn't really line up, it's almost like they're off-centered a little bit. It's kind of interesting. But this is cool because if you look at a normal playing card, this is extremely symmetrical, this is the same, it looks the same upside or downside, right? Whereas with a circular card, uh, it doesn't really have to worry about that level of symmetry. It's kind of difficult to say what's up or down because it's circular. And that's kind of interesting. So if you look at this here, this is different than this side up here. So it's like these are they're different. Yeah. This is really neat. I could look at this for a long time, but let's... Uh, Let's keep going. So a funny thing happened in the last tarot unboxing video. I looked through the cards and then I saw this one card that I thought was the lover's card. It, it had two people kind of embracing, but it wasn't the lover's card. It was just uh, another card packaged along with the tarot card. So there was two of them. Uh, so it had 80 cards in total. So let's see if we can find maybe those types of cards in this deck and if it, if it even has it. So I'm just gonna Maybe we can kind of walk through it together here, if you can see that. There's the Knight of Swords, Page of Swords. Oh, so it feels like this is in order. Queen, Swords. Oh, no, because there's pentacles here. Maybe let's try and... I'm going to keep these in order. See if I can try to do that. So there's the Ace of Pentacles, Two of Pentacles, Three of Pentacles. Four of Pentacles, five of Pentacles, six. Sorry, I'm trying to do this. Seven of Pentacles, eight of Pentacles, nine of Pentacles, ten of Pentacles, King of Pentacles, Knight of Pentacles, Page of Pentacles, Queen of Pentacles. So here's our first trump card. What? Oh, oh my god. Okay, come on. There we go. It's a pretty neat design. It's like, it feels like a stained glass design. Like, they're, uh, 
like the glass has been broken and it's been kind of crudely put back together. Yeah, this is really cool, it's very fascinating. And then we have got the magician here, high priestess. So it looks like we're just, they've got the trumps, emperor, hierophant. So yeah, there you go. So there's the lover's card. That's pretty neat. Chariot. So this is cool. Strength is number eight in the uh, positioning here. Other decks have it as 11. So I find that to be an interesting concept is, you know, when you look at your deck, where are the strength and justice positions? So in, you know, it, I don't know if it really matters too much the way you read it, but I think it's cool to understand um, maybe a, a little bit deeper part of the history of um, these forms of deck, I guess you could call it, or how these decks get structured and what um, artistic uh, methods are used and all that stuff. I think it's interesting to know those things. So there's the Hermit, Wheel of Fortune. This is pretty cool, look at that. Yeah, that's pretty neat. So there's Justice, position 11, the Hanged Man, Death. This is pretty cool. So let's see, yeah, I thought so. So this is really cool. So some decks have the Death holding a flag and some of the symbols, uh, some of the imagery and the symbols also appear on the back of the card. Uh, that seems to be a, a common uh, a thing that happens with the death card. So it kind of does that here as well too. You've got like a purple flower right in the center and there's a lot of purple coloring happening. And it definitely connects with the back of it, I would say. Maybe not directly, but you definitely get a sense that that's kind of a purple flower in us, you know, so. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So that deck has that sort of attribute. And then we've got Temperance right here. Wow, the devil, look at that. It's really neat. Actually kind of scary. That's probably, I would say out of all the tarot decks I've seen so far, this is kind of the most menacing devil. It's hit the eyes or creepy. Ooh, oh. oh, cool. And then tower. That's really neat. I like the purple and green imagery. I like those colors. It's kind of like a the colors of the Joker, like in Batman. That's what that reminds me of. That's why maybe it sticks out so well in my mind. And then the star, the moon, the sun. This is really neat. Look at that. Oh, come on. There we go. Oh. Yeah. Sun, judgment. That's cool. The world. Yeah, so I guess this is all uh, the major arcana, so I'm just going to move this over here. Uh, and so this is interesting, instead of cups, this is called vessels. Oh, come on. Ace of vessels. So I guess there's the ace, two, three. It looks like a lot of the imagery is just sort of a reconstruction of the, uh, the, the Pamela Coleman Smith imagery that gets used in the, the Rider uh, White, uh, was it Rider White Smith deck, uh, the last one that I opened. And it looks like a lot of it's the same, just uh, sort of reimagined in this sort of uh, stained glass broken up design, which I think is really, that's a cool way to, to do it. Five of Vessels, six, seven, eight, this is pretty weird, the Nine of Vessels. That, that's kind of a bizarre image. I don't really know what to make of it. Because the Nine of uh, Cups, it's, it's kind of like a card of, you know, like happiness and abundance. But when I look at this card, it doesn't, there's almost a sadness to it. I wonder what the guidebook has to say. There could be maybe a different interpretation of this. But yeah, this is a very strange, 
Very strange card. Whoa, there we go. Just like the, the face is just there. It's not broken up or anything like that. So I don't know, it kind of sticks out. The Ten of Vessels, King of Vessels, Knight, Page, Queen. So it looks like they use Page, Knight, Queen, King for their court card designation. And so the Stabs, as you can see there, so this, instead of Wands, it's called Stabs. Staves, maybe you can better say it that way. And it looks like it pretty much continues on with uh, the, the Pamela Coleman Smith imagery, which is great. This is, it'll make it easy to read. And that's another thing to consider is, uh, you know, what, imagery, what, what images are in your tarot deck. Is it going to be easy to read for you? Or, you know, if you have to keep using the guidebook, it, it just, it takes longer for you to do a re reading. So having images that uh, allow you to recall things and, and connect the dots with the symbolism and meaning is it's very beneficial. So seven staves, eight, nine, ten. This is the king. It's kind of a weird looking king. He's got long hair. King, knight, page, queen. So I think that's all of them. And then back to the swords. So this is kind of cool. It's got, whoa, yeah, swords, ace, two, three. Yeah, this is cool. So three of swords is usually consistent in a lot of decks, I find. You've got the heart stabbed by three swords. Pretty much in every tarot deck has something like that, unless it's more, um, how do you say, uh, following the Kabbalah where uh, in the minor arcana you've got, there's no images, there's just sort of symbols. Um, you'll find that in the Aleister Crowley, uh, Thoth, Thoth, is it Thoth or Thoth? I don't know. Sorry, I'm butchering it. The, the Toth deck, you could say. And, uh, you know, there's other decks that follow that tradition or uh, that, that style of imagery as well. But this doesn't, so this is really cool. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And there's the king. So let's just see if we got all the cards here. We got the king, queen, knight, page of swords. We've got ace, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so all the swords are here. So king, queen, knight, page, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Okay, those are all here. King, queen, knight, page. We've got ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five. Four, three, two, ace. Those are all here. Let's see. King, queen, knight, page. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, ace. Okay, great. So those are all here. Let's just go through the major arcana again. Fool, magician. High Priestess, you can see that better, Empress, Emperor, Hierophant, The Lovers, Chariot, Strength, Hermit, yep. Wheel of Fortune, Justice, The Hanged Man, Death, Temperance, The Devil, Tower, the star, moon, sun, judgment, world. Yeah, cool. This is an interesting uh, depiction of the world there, if you can see it. Yeah, this is really nice. Okay, so everything's here. We've got all the major arcana, and then each suit of the 
minor arcana accounted for. So there's no extra cards, so there there isn't two extra cards or there's no one extra card. It's just the 78 cards in the deck. And that's it, pretty much. So this is really cool. This is a very interesting deck. I, I like this. Uh, just at the first glance, it feels really cool. The cards feel nice. I already said that. I think that's an important thing, is how do they feel in your hands? You know, there's a texture to certain cards. Uh, to bring back the bicycle card, this has a more... There's ridges on this, so the texture, it's kind of rigid a little bit, whereas this is completely smooth, so... I don't know. I, I think, you know, those sorts of things I like to pay attention to. So, yeah, let's... Uh, maybe let's try and shuffle this. I don't know how I'm going to even shuffle this, to be perfectly honest. This is a really, this is the first circle deck I've ever experienced. Maybe let's just try and do a normal shuffle like this and see what happens. Okay, yeah. It's a little weird, but we can do it. Oh, this, it looks really cool. Um, you won't be able to see, I mean, from my perspective, it's, you can only see it from where the camera is for you, for you the viewer, but for me, it looks really cool, just shuffling it, looking at the back. And it looks like these can shuffle pretty well, very similar to, you know, how you would shuffle a playing card deck. Because they're, they are the same size, it's just they're circular, so that's, you know, the only difference. So, yeah. And then you can do that. I don't know the names of shuffling techniques off my hand. I should. There's overhand shuffle, I guess this is what that's called. I think this is called a rifle shuffle or riffle shuffle. Boy, I don't know. I should look that up before I talk like I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but this feels really cool to shuffle. It feels interesting. And it feels like it can shuffle really well, too. Uh, the circular nature of the cards really don't uh, cause any problems. It feels fairly good in my hands. You know, and then I could do like a wash with the cards and kind of fan them all out, shuffle that way. But just shuffling it like this feels really nice. I, I like, yeah, the backing of the card is really cool. The, the, the purple tone of it, it it's, it's almost calming. Uh, maybe you could even say therapeutic. So, maybe let's just... Oh, the moon. It's an interesting card to have as your first draw. Uh, hidden enemies, I guess, or the things unknown to the, to the reader. Let's see what else we got. Four of swords. Okay. And five of swords. That's interesting. Four and then five. Yeah, all right. Well, I'm not going to do a reading for this. For This is just a, an unboxing and sort of a reveal of these cards. But as far as I'm concerned, this is a really cool deck. Uh, if you were able to find it on Amazon or anywhere else, I would absolutely pick it up. This would be a, a really cool addition to your collection. And uh, in terms of using this in conjunction with other cards, um, you know, there's articles that I've done uh, talking about Beat the Devil and how you would have a companion deck along with your uh, either a 52 card playing deck or, or a full full tarot deck. This this could make for a really cool uh, companion deck, you know, if you're just counting the points that you'd score during your game of Beat the Devil. So definitely look, uh, look out for that on uh, my site pathintero.com there's a few articles that talk about ways to do that so if you get this deck uh, this, this would be uh, a really neat addition to you, your tarot collection and something that you could probably use in conjunction with your other decks you know using other other methods that I've described on the on the website here so there we go so I'll just put that on top of there and maybe uh, yeah, center that out so that can be a cool shot. No, wait, we got to get it centered. All right, we're done.